Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a weaving over a book with a few simple materials you should be able to find at home. For this tutorial, you will need some yarn, a book, uh, a knife, a plastic knife, a chopstick, a popsicle stick, and some tape. <clears throat> so to get started, you're going to tape your warp thread on the back of your book, and you're going to start winding your warp over the book. Um, for this, I'm trying to do it a little bit in tension and have it spaced evenly. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to weave about three and a half um, to four inches wide, just because that's easy for me to get started with. And you can see I'm uh, spacing the threads equally and holding them in tension as I wind. So, after you get all of your threads wound over the book, you're going to turn the book over you'll see here and you're going to tie the um, end warp to the beginning warp. So you could go ahead and use a needle and go over and over under every thread but in this case I'm showing you how to make a string harness uh, so that you can have a really simple way to pick up a plain weave shed using um, just string some tape and a chopstick. Here you could use a knife or any sort of long object to create this heddle harness system and um, as you can see I'm passing under uh, every other th warp thread, picking it up, and then going over the chopstick about two to three inches in distance trying to create a regular tension. When that is complete I'm gonna grab a piece of tape to um, just stabilize the positioning on the chopstick so I don't get any movement in my harness system. And I'm gonna tie that final knot here to finish off that harness. Now after this is tied, the next step is actually very simple as well. Now that the knot is tied, I'm just gonna grab a piece of tape and stabilize those string handles in, onto the chopstick. You could use masking tape or um, duct tape, either would work. And now one of the systems is ready to lift a shed. Now I'm gonna take a popsicle stick, knife, any other um, hard object, and I'm going to insert those that object into every other thread, not the ones that the string huddle is lifting, but the other ones, the opposite. So now between these two systems, I can weave plain weave really easily. So here I've moved on to um, secure my weft threads to uh, a knife or a chopstick, any object that's gonna help me pass those threads back and forth. Uh, if you had a long tapestry needle, that could work. Um, trying to think of other things like a spoon that might work and again I'm just using tape to secure it and I'm ready to weave so I'm gonna open that first shed with the string heddles and use a new popsicle stick to position an opening that I can then pass the threads through so this makes it really easy so that I don't have to go every other thread over under with that knife I can just pass that thread through really simply and you have to pull it through all the way to the end and then press it into position. So you see here I used the chopstick or I mean the popsicle stick a little bit but I can also go get a fork and use that as sort of a comb. And now I'm opening the inverse shed. So the other shed is opened with that back popsicle stick and I'm reinforcing that opening in the front with the front popsicle stick. And now I have my fork. Yay! And um, I'm also going to use this as a chance to tuck that outermost thread there because I like clean salvages. So here I'm just tucking that in. I'm gonna clip it and no one will be the wiser that that was ever there. So again, I'm just going every other. So I've opened the string harness. I'm passing the one collar weft back and forth and creating a plain weave structure. And pressing it, I don't press it too hard. I, If you wanted to, you could really compact it, but I find it um, works better just to press it with a little bit of tension, but that can be varied. So here you're gonna see, I'm just gonna continue on until my next step is that I'm going to add a second color. And you'll see me add this other lighter peach here in a minute. Here I'm coming from the other direction and I'm gonna do a technique called inter interlocking weft. 
And okay, so here again, I'm tucking my thread sort of back in mm -hmm. to that open shed, going under a few more of the lifted warp threads and then clipping that tail. So now um, I want to make sure that I'm intersecting these two separate colors. Um, it could happen in the middle of your design, it could happen anywhere else in your design, and I'm going to intersect them in the middle before I position them back in the new shed that I'm going to open. So you'll see here they're not connected now, <clears throat> but I'm going to lift that other shed wrap one around the other, and then send them back to where they came from. So this is a great way to start using more than one color. And as you can imagine, you could start using more, three or four colors. You just need them passing separately as separate units um, attached as a shed or, I'm sorry, as a shuttle or um, attached separately to each different knife or chopstick. So here I'm just gonna keep using those two colors and um, continue on until I, I'll show you one other two color technique here in a minute. So here I'm starting a slightly different technique. Um, I'm going to send one weft over in the open shed to pick up the second weft and I'm gonna position it wherever I want those two things to intersect. And so um, it's a little bit faster because here you're still using two wefts but you're using two wefts intersecting in the same way. Um, as opposed to um, changing the pick midway through yep. and, and having to come up in the middle or wherever you want to position that intersection. So this is another great way and kind of fast and easy way to start using um, more than one color. So as you see, I use um, one weft, have it go under the other one before sending it back through that same open shed. So really you'll have two weft threads per pick intersecting um, wherever you want to position that intersection before you keep moving on and packing it into place. And here I'll just demonstrate how that uh, other weft, the lighter peach weft, could be also sent to the other side to pick up the darker coral weft and sent back. And then here I'm just showing how the positioning is really variable based on where you want that intersection to show up on your cloth. In this next section, I'm just going to show, demonstrate how um, any harness system can be created. So you can start making other patterns. Here, I'm simply going to go, instead of the normal plain weave um, system, I'm going to go under two threads and um, let the skip two threads and then go under the next two threads. So this will help me to create a system where I'm gonna do something called a basket weave. So it's um, two over, two under as I weave it. So there's unlimited possibility for pattern and variation based on this um, string harnessing system. And I've just wanted you guys to see that um, any system can be enacted and any patterns could be embedded as a series of different um, string harnesses that you establish. So here, um, now that I have everything in place, I'm just gonna put another piece of tape to secure that next um, string harness so none of the tension um, gets out of whack. So I'm just applying the tape to the top. 
And the next step will be to insert my um, stick harnessing system. So now instead of the plane weave where I went over under every one, I went over and under the opposite two from my string harness. So, so now I'm gonna show you how to insert two picks of weft for every open shed. And this is required for the basket weave. So I'm now doing my second pass. And as you can see, I kept, I caught that outermost thread before sending the second one back. So here's another chance to see that in action. Um, nope, see, I catch it on the outermost thread before I send it back. This ensures that you have a nice salvage on the edge of your basket weave and that your, your weft thread is really going salvage to salvage. Now I'm gonna open the opposite shed. I'm gonna pass the peach yarn back and forth twice in the same open shed. Oops, I took the stick out, put it back, caught the outermost thread, sending it in the same open shed. So I'm gonna do one more um, row of basket weave to kind of remember which one you're on. It's the opposite of the one I did previously catch that outermost thread and send it right on back. So that'll give you a nice result with your basket weave. And if you don't do it, it'll still work. It'll just look a little different. So I'm going back to a plain weave here. So I, I activated that first string harness and now I'm activating that back stick harness and I'm going to plain weave and I've started to do something different. Uh, here, I'm weaving every other pick. I'm weaving one pick of um, coral and one pick of peach. And so this is just giving you um, another variation on um, sequencing of color and patterns. So these things can be combined in any combination that you want. You could do a pick of uh, basket weave, a pick of plain weave. You could start um, embedding other patterning um, methods throughout this whole entire cloth. I encourage you to keep going with this, explore new colors, um, embed new colors at any given time, do other interlock or interlocking wefts. Um, and then if you stay along for part two, you'll see how to do more tapestry techniques. Thanks for watching and I hope you catch part two.